bit of deja vu, and welcome to the EEPROM 9, and we have another Zenit. This one has a different issue. I don't know if it's going to play ball and uh, display it now, but the bulb mode doesn't sometimes triggers like a normal mode. At the moment it's working properly, but it's not entirely reliable. It'll sometimes fire like the um, 30th of a second. Oh, there we go. It did it a bit there. So we need to do the other type of thing I discussed in the other video. Just look to the viewer statistics on the other one. They're not good. But eh, someone might find this useful out here if we're getting these zealots up and running again. They're pretty simple cameras. They don't have a lot of complexity to them. Ooh, I think that one cross-threaded when I last put in the screw. That, or I picked up the wrong screw off the floor when it fell on the floor. That's also a possibility. Let's have a look. Yeah, no, the thread's the same. No, I think it's just a gnarly screw. I mean, this one is 78. Yeah, serial number 78. So yeah, the other thing to go with these is to do with this. So give me an opportunity to see you. Now, let's see if we can replicate this. When I tighten this down... One thing you'll notice, these screws for the tripod mount aren't always tight. And I reckon this is to do with manufacturing tolerances not being that good. If I do them up tight like you'd expect, I bet it'll mount. Nope, bulb mode is just working reliably because it wants to show me off. When it's been giving me grief every other time I've done this. Oh, typical. And then I'll put it back together and it'll go. <laughs> it'll be worse when I put it back together. You watch. You just watch. It's always the way. There's not really much point pausing and whatnot when there's only like four screws that take like five seconds to undo if your attention spans that bad what are you doing watching my youtube channel do you want to do that one to about there where it's got about two mil about two mil between the um, screw and the thing and then same with this one and boom see that you can see it's slightly bent so what you do is you bend that straight. You give this bit especially a little bend down. If you pop that up, you can actually see the... Uh, that is your shutter button. Right there. And that is a film sprawl re reel. And this is a little plastic space that just holds the... Um, this reel in place. Otherwise it slides around a bit too much. Also another thing you'll notice with the rod, it falls out. So careful of that one so you don't lose your rod. The other one that f fell out, this is to do with the self timer. And what this one does is when you do this, when you trigger the timer, if you keep an eye on it, you'll notice it raises. So it pushes this up because this bit See how that's being pulled up? There he goes. That's to do with the film um, rewind button, which is here. This one, if I cock the camera and I pull this up, the shutter will fire. And then this one resets it. That's why the uh, that thing, so this one fires it, this one resets it. That's why this 
thing being in alignment is actually kind of critical. This is a bit here. It does look like from factory they have that, but what I tend to do is get a pliers and just bend it back a bit more straight on the desk. This stuff's quite thick for its size, and then we've managed to bend it back a little. And that'll be enough. That will usually be enough to do it. The tensioning on these is fine, so these don't need touching. Getting this back in is a bit on the fiddly side. Don't put that back yet. You'll want this bit in here. Let's put this uh, the shutter rod back in. That's working because it's going up and down. See what I mean about these being very simple cameras. And thus very easy to work on. Try and get that to sit in an up position, but it will often fall back down. Then you use your tweezers to lift these up. So these screws are up. And then just push it in as far as it can go. Hold that in so it doesn't slide over. Then what I usually do is I screw this one up first. Because when you do this one up first, it tends to want to slide that way. I mean, it wants to slide that way anyway, so... That's what we do. I made a mistake. I didn't put this in first. And it instantly rolls on the floor. Gravity instantly punishes me for my sin of just forgetting a part. So we'll just rerun it. We'll use this as an opportunity to rerun. Loosen. About two millimetres from the uh, thing. Loosen this one about the same. That'll ping off. Pull this up because that actually slides into there. I'll try and do it so you can see it. See there, it's fallen in a bit. That's fine. Slide it down so it's over the little slot that's in that. Then grab with a pair of tweezers, whatever ones are your favourite. Pop these up. And then slide that along. And boom, you're in. Then just hold that in place and tighten. The full tightness. There's no particular tolerance torque or anything that seems to be uh, critical for this. Then test. And if that was the problem, bulb should work perfectly. Case in point, it's playing nicely. The next bit's going to be a bit tricky because this little bit here actually causes problems. Where it pushes down and actually doesn't let you hit the button down enough to trigger bulb mode. So this bit, you'll need to sand down, so I'm just going to go off camera and do that because, well, everyone knows how to sand things down. Just use whatever sanding equipment you have available. In my case, Dremel because it's quicker. So after you've done some sanding with a tool of your choice, in my case, a Dremel, take, uh, take off a few bits of a mill. And we can pop this in and we should be able to screw it in fully tight with the bulb mode working as it should. It's kind of annoying it didn't exhibit the problem it was showing last night, but sometimes this stuff just fixes itself just randomly out of nowhere. The trouble with problems that go away on their own is they come back on their own. Nice try. One thing you'll notice of the Soviets is they love their flathead screws. Japanese stuff will generally use like the J versions of the Phillips screws, which most of the time you can get away with using the Phillips screw in. But Soviet love their flathead. A lot of uh, vintage stuff loves flathead. A lot of Western um, MOD stuff likes their hex keys.
It's one of the fun little quirks. And then when we open the back of this, bulb mode should work as expected. And it does. It works perfectly. I probably actually made it a little more reliable. You watch, I'll turn off the camera, we'll go back to being dodgy. I guarantee it. But that is another one fixed. These are not difficult cameras to repair, and if you're trying to start yourself off with fixing cameras, these are not a bad one to go on, but they're a lot simpler than, say, um, this beastie that I had to fix, the uh, Pentax MEF, first SLR to do any kind of auto-focusing. That one required a bit of a dried-up grease and uh, some screwdrivers poked in the bottom to... Uh, Get the mechanism working as it should because it had jammed. And I was able to get it to fire the mirror but not the um, shutter. And then after that it wasn't firing properly when you put the lens on, so yeah. Some of them can exhibit some uh, complex faults. And if you want a real challenge when it comes to range find, just go for the Yashika Electro 35. Boy, he is a nightmare to work on. So many annoying little wires just holding everything together. Especially if we need to do a brain transplant like I did. Kind of ironic, I fixed that camera, got it fully working. Don't really use it because the lens on it's a bit shit. And this comes through two examples. Like, really highly regarded. I'm not quite sure what. Like, poor man's Leica. It ain't a Leica and it ain't a poor man's camera. Well, it is a Japanese camera, and it's built very well. It's just not built very well to work on. These are actually built decently to work on. But yeah, that is the, um, what's it called? The, um, the bulb mode sorted. That's the other common problem these exhibit. It's usually shutter cans being tightened or something like that. The other one's got a failed, um... Needs a new rubberized coating on its uh, shutter curtain. Anyway, that's enough. I'll just be rambling. Thanks for watching.